Well, then turn with me to 2 Kings chapter number 4. 2 Kings chapter number 4. We're talking about Elisha, the successor of the great prophet Elijah. However, in some respects, Elisha, uh, you don't like to make comparisons like this, I guess, but Elisha, in some respects, was a greater prophet than Elijah was. They seem to have been different temperaments. Uh, Elijah, uh, he was a bombastic fellow. He was in, the fa- in your face kind of fellow. Elisha, I think, was uh, more sedate. It, it tells us God uses all kinds of people, not any particular personality that uh, God uses more than another one. But Elisha was a good man. You know, Elijah, he, he asked Elijah to give him a double portion of his spirit. And Elijah was about to be taken up by a chariot of fire. And he said, if you see me when I go, then it will be given you. And he saw him when he went. And Elijah dropped his old mantle over the side of the chariot of fire, and Elisha picked it up. Went down to the Jordan River after seeing his master go into heaven. And he took that mantle and smote the Jordan River and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? He started out his ministry uh, not questioning God, but proving God. And so the, the Jordan opened up for him. And uh, Elisha's ministry was one of many miracles. Last week we looked at the, uh, the widow's uh, oil and how he told her to go and borrow plenty of vessels, empty vessels, and uh, not a few and she, she took the little container of oil she had and filled vessels and vessels and vessels and vessels until they were all filled. And he says, now you go and sell that and uh, pay off your debtors, save your sons, and you and your boys live off the rest of it. And so tonight, this is yet another one of those occasions where <clears throat> a God uses this man, uses him in a great way. Let's begin reading in verse number 8 of chapter 4 of 2 Kings. And it fell on a day that Elisha, Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber, and lay there, and said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he, and, he said un, and he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? That lets us know the importance of this man. He had the ear of the king. And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. What her answer was, I don't really need anything from the king or from the captain of the host. And he said, what then is to be done for her? Apparently, some time had lapsed between verse 13 and 14, and she's no longer in the presence of Elisha. And he's talking to Gehazi in verse 14. He said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, According to the time of life. There's much to be said about this woman. The Bible said she was a great woman. That means that uh, she was a woman of wealth. 
Uh, she probably was a woman of influence. And in his travel, Elisha and Gehazi, his servant, would pass by her house, and she began to invite them in and uh, to break bread with them. And uh, then she said unto her husband in verse 9, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Here's a woman that was hospitable. And here's a woman that had perception. She said, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Now God is very restrictive in His language in, in the Bible in talking about men of God. You hear preachers refer to themselves as a man of God and other preachers as men of God. And uh, we're going to have uh, all the men of God come down and pray and all of that. But you know, there are only 11 or 12 men in all the Bible that the Bible calls men of God. There's only one in the New Testament that the Bible calls a man of God. And uh, you'd think it's Paul, but it's not. It's Timothy. Uh, Paul called him a man of God. So God is restrictive in his language. He doesn't just brag on folks. And I don't think there is another man in all the Bible that is called a holy man of God. But this woman, was she not only had hospitality to extend, but she perceived that this was a holy man of God. She seemed to have a perception her husband did not have. As far as I know, he did not share that perception. And <clears throat> then she was a very generous woman. She said, let us... <coughs> Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And uh, she talking about building a room for him. Uh, and she did. She and her husband built a room and furnished a room. That was Elisha's room. And when he passed by uh, in his travels, he came that way. He would stay in that room. She was a very generous woman. But then she was a blessed woman. Elisha wanted to do something. He wanted to reciprocate the blessing. So he called her and said, what would you have me do? I could speak a word to the king. I could speak a word to the captain of the host. Elisha must have had influence in the palace. Must have had uh, tremendous influence. He said, I, I can speak a word to the king for you. She said, no, I dwell among my own people. That's uh, saying uh, my, my people, my family... Meets my needs. I don't need the king. I don't need anything from the king. And after she had left, he asked Gehazi, he said, what can we do for her? He, he wasn't content not to, not to do something for her. And Gehazi said, well, she doesn't have any children. And her husband is an old man. And Elisha called her in and said, a certain season... You're going to have a baby. And she said, don't lie to me. But it wasn't a lie. That season came, and that baby came. This woman was a great woman. She was a hospitable woman. She was a generous woman, a perceptive woman. And now she is a blessed woman, a very blessed woman. She has this baby. She didn't even ask for it. But just like she perceived he was a holy man of God, uh, apparently Gehazi perceived that she would like to have a baby. And so uh, Elisha, the holy man of God, was a blessing to her. What is a holy man? She had, she had a perception of this man that he's a holy man of God. I don't think she'd ever seen one like him before. Somebody said a holy man is one who believes in God, one who belongs to God, and get this, one who behaves like God. That's a holy man. But we all have the mandate to be holy because God says, Be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. So this matter of being a holy person, this holy man didn't have to worry about his provision, his daily needs are met. God takes care of his people. He took care of Elijah. You remember Elijah came on the scene, and uh, boom, he just appears. You don't, you know, he, he has no history. 
He, no history is shared with him. Uh, but Elijah the Tishbite is in the face of the king giving him a weather report. Said it's not going to rain till I say so. And you think, boy, he's about to have a, a, a nationwide ministry now. But God says, now go and hide yourself down by the brook Cherith. I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. God's taking care of the man. God's taking care of his man. Elijah, in obedience to the Lord, went down by the brook Cherith. We don't know how long he was there. We assume it was quite a, a long time. And I like what it said. It said, God commanded the ravens. Now, had I been Elijah, I think I would have said, Now, Lord, I appreciate what you want to do, but ravens, they, they eat dead possums. Lord, would you just send a, send a bald eagle with that six-foot wing spread. Let that big eagle come swooping down every morning and every night and bring me my meal. Elijah, Elijah didn't do that. God commanded the ravens. I wonder how he did that. God speaks every language. God made them. He, he, God talked whale language, you know. He told a whale one time to come to a certain place at a certain time, and he said, you wait there, and you can have a preacher for lunch. And the whale was there. God somehow commanded him to come there. He came there. Old Jonah was thrown overboard. And that poor whale wished he had missed that appointment. That guy, Jonah, didn't digest well. Things are going on in the belly of that whale. Jonah's doing business with God. He's run from God. He's a backslid preacher. But he cried out of the belly of the whale. He got his heart right with God down in the belly of that whale. Then God commanded the whale and said, you've had him long enough. Go spit him out. And that whale said, yes, sir, I'm glad to. And he went to the beach and spit him out and vomited him out. God has the ear of every animal. I, I, I love animals. I, I really do. I, I love animals. We have a dog and we have a cat. We own the dog. We're the cat's staff. <clears throat> Animals are different. They are different. But I love animals. I've put my order in the millennium to have a baby elephant. I don't know if it'll go through or not, but that's what I want. But <clears throat> you think when, when Noah had the ark ready, it came time to put the animals on. You think he went out and rustled up the animals? No, God spoke to them. God said, Mr. Elephant and Ms. Elephant, go to that boat and go up that ramp and go to your place. God has the ear of all the animals. And he commanded the ravens to feed Elijah. And the ravens, in obedience to the command of the Lord, these ravens fed Elijah. A holy man, doesn't have to worry about daily provision. God takes care of him. When the brook dried up, God sent him to Zarephath. And the, a widow woman there, God commanded to take care of him. And she did. Elijah, so far as I know, never worried about daily provision. A holy man has his needs met. David said, I've been young, now I'm old, yet have I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Another thing about a holy man is he is quickly noticed. This great woman, she wasn't just great in that she was probably wealthy, but uh, she was great in wisdom as well. And she was great in discernment. And she said, I perceive that this is a holy man, a holy man of God. A holy person doesn't have to advertise themselves. Their life is the advertisement. A holy man soon becomes the topic of conversation. 
she's talking to her husband about this man. I perceive this is a holy man of God. People talk about us, either negative or positive. Well, if that guy has religion, I don't want him. He calls himself a Christian, but he's not honest. She's a churchgoer, but she's selfish. People talk about us. They say they're Christians, but I really can't tell much difference in them and anybody else. They talk about us. But a Christian, a holy person, people say, that guy's real. That guy is real. They may not like it. They may not come across like they like it. They may not like it. But they have to acknowledge you're real. What you have is real. It's not the fluff that they're used to out of different people. It's, it's, it's real. And so a holy person will be the topic of conversation, whether you want to be or not. They will either talk negatively or they will talk positively. Romans 14, 7 says, None of us liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself. I'm not just living for me. You're not just living for you. We don't live to ourselves. We have an influence. We have an impact. A holy man gets his biggest opportunities in everyday spheres of life. Elisha's not preaching. I don't know if he's a preacher or not. He's not preaching. He's a prophet. But this is a, just an everyday sphere of life. Things progressed. He would go up and down the road and he'd stop in. He would spend the night in the room that they had built for him. Nothing miraculous about that. But in this everyday setting, is where Elisha exercised his ministry. He said, you're going to have a baby. <clears throat> Don't lie to me, prophet. My husband is an old man. I can fix old men. You're going to have a baby. Brother Michael's been teaching Sunday school about Abraham and Sarah. I kind of wish he'd get off that. <clears throat> I'm afraid of the Lord my <laughs> might decide to do that again. <laughs> and I don't think Sarah is willing, so. <laughs> we don't really have any secrets. Charlotte and I don't. I'll be 75 this year. I weigh 175 pounds. She'll be 73 this year. She weighs a hundred and something pounds. So, we don't have no secrets. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the sermon. I, I don't know what that has to do with. <laughs> Probably has to do with my supper. <laughs> but a holy man will always see results from his consistent living. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Did you know God never commands us to be successful? It's a wonderful thing if you're successful. That's great. Jesus, at the end of his ministry, only had 12, and one of them was a devil. I'd say Jesus wasn't much of a success. Oh, he built the big crowds, the big crowds, the big crowds, but where were the big crowds at Calvary? God never commanded us to be successful, but to be faithful. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. That's a great verse of Scripture. Just keep on, Keep on, keep on, and 
keep on. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Elisha didn't try to make a splash here. He didn't try to make a name for himself. He just went about consistently being a holy man. And God used his ministry and greatly blessed his ministry. Let's bow together in prayer. Thank you, Father, for this account from the Word of God about a holy man of God. Lord, help us to adhere to that admonition where you said, Be holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. It doesn't just apply to Elisha, to prophets, to preachers, to men. It applies to every believer. We can be holy because we have been saved by a holy God. We are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Help us to live a consistent life. Help us to live a productive life. Help us, dear Lord, that uh, those with discernment might discern that we are a holy people. And I pray, Lord, that you would be with us in the week that lies before us. Help us to take advantage of every opportunity you give us to witness by word and by, by walk that we might be examples. And Lord Jesus, that you might be glorified in all that we do in this week that lies before us. We pray now, Lord, you'd be with this time of invitation. May each one of us do exactly what the Spirit of God tells us to do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me, please, with heads bowed.